This is number 12 from the first study guide for the chapter 7 to 9 test, number uh, test A. I wanted to do number 12 because this is uh, one of those things that, um, if you haven't seen this before, th this can seem a little bit out in left field. And so we've done all of these elements, but you may have never put it together this way. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to write down what I know uh, from the beginning. And so we were told that the correlation between math and verbal is 5 or 57, right? So we know that R is, let's do this in white, R is going to be equal to 0.57, right? And this is uh, SAT math versus SAT verbal. We also know that they are normally distributed. And so I'm going to draw this part out here. We know that the verbal scores, at least, SAT verbal, is normally distributed, and it her score, so whatever the score this is right here, marks off the 90th percentile, which means that the area below this score is 90%, meaning that score is at least as high as 90% of all the other scores or higher. The other question is if we know that, if we know R, and and we know that the other SAT, the math scores, are also normally distributed, right, so SAT math, then the question begs to ask what percentile is the SAT math in? And you probably are saying, that's great and wonderful, but what does that have to do with linear regression and correlation. Well, it happens to connect right here. If you paid attention closely in some of the notes that we did, even in some of the quizzes we've done, it talks about z-scores, number of standard deviations away from the mean something is, and how that's connected to your correlation value. The formula we know looks like this. It's that the estimated z-score for the y is equal to r times the z-score for the x value. So if you were to tell me that you have a z-score for one, for my x values, then I can tell you what the approximate z-score for y is. And if you remember very carefully back in chapter 6, if I know a z-score, I can find its percentile. And so let's kind of take uh, uh, steps to get to this answer. What we know is in order for me to do this, I need to find the z-score for x. I don't have the z-score for x quite yet, but I can get it. Okay. If I know the percentile, if I know this scenario, we can set up inverse norm. And I know that it's 0.9 with 0 and 1. If you remember that little trick, we do these two things. We're going to get z-scores as uh, uh, for, or the, the, that's the mean of generation for the z-scores. If I type that in, it's going to give me back an actual z-score uh, for that particular value. turns out that we do that. We're going to get 1.28 approximately for my z-score for, for the y value. Well, uh, it turns out that if I know that and I know r, I can find out the z-score for x. So this particular z-score right here is what I'm looking for. And so if we do that, we're going to say point five seven times one point two eight that's going to give me point seven three now a lot of you would stop here and say oh well it must be in the 75th percentile and that would be incorrect because that's not a percentile this right is what we did here we just did r times z the z score for x and we just now got the approximate z score for y in order for me to find the area under the curve below the z score or any number for that matter is normal cdf so normal CDF, uh, well, we're really going to be doing it like this. This is we're going to be finding the area of. We know that z-score is 0.73. So we're going to go from negative infinity, 99, all the way up to 0.73, which is almost, two, uh, almost three fourths of a standard deviation above the mean, with zero and one as my mean is standard deviation. Turns out it's going to be 0 0.767, approximately 767. So you would say this is approximately the 
percentile. You could say 77th percentile or even 76th percentile would be fine too, depending on how you round it. But this is how you get to the answer. This is not a particularly long question. Uh, in fact, I, I drew out a lot more than I needed to to explain this to you, but uh, this is how it works out. Re let me just recap real quick. I knew this, and I knew this. It really helps to draw it out to kind of illustrate what I'm doing. I also realize that this was the key fact that I needed to know from this unit, that the z-score is connected by the r-value. So we found the z-score for x, we multiplied that value times r to get 0.73, which is the z-score, the approximate z-score for my y-value. The next part would be to find the area below the curve because that is definitively what percentile is, the area to the left. It turns out that there's 76.7% of the area to the left of this particular value. So her math SAT score would have been approximately in the 76th percentile. Hope that helps. If you got any questions, bring them to class. Mm -hmm.